Welcome to Tile Basics Session 3. In this exercise, we will go through setting up the spe Spectrum Analyzer Simulator and go through various test tasks and building out the main menu to get our test going. So in the previous sessions, we went over you know, actions, data items. We placed a couple of actions here on the, on the palette. And we had set up an instrument earlier, but I want to review that. So I deleted the instrument. But, but in core concept for this profile that we're building over many sessions, it's an emissions profile. So what we want to do is get the measure range action, which is in the palette here. Uh, when you hover over it, it literally will say measure range. We'll just do a click and a click and drop it on the screen. And in order to use this to take data, we would need to have, um, ha have the properties filled in. So if we look at this, there's a tab for different receiver functions. There's an options tab. There's some other, there's a special tab we don't use anymore. Uh, special and monitor and bookmarks don't get used as much. And then we have the frequency range. Uh, we can set the amplitude on the receiver. I tend to just take the fixed reference level off. Um, we have a place for the data. This is key because the action won't run if you don't have a place to put the test data out of the instrument. So we'll have to create a data item. And then also we'll need uh, to place an instrument. Now, you'll notice in this profile that there's space for three instruments. There's a receiver, a quasi-peak detector, and a pre-selector. That is in case you have off-board equipment. Um, a long time ago, HP had a flagship uh, receiver that was the 8566B, and it had secondary uh, you know, pieces of equipment that were quasi-peak detectors and pre-selectors, and they were separate. Uh, now, modern receivers and spectrum analyzers have these things built in, so you would only put an instrument in the receiver area. And then there's the test parameters. You know, you set up your bandwidth, you set up your step size if it's a receiver, you turn which detector you're going to be looking at in your instrument. In this case, we're using a spectrum analyzer. It's just going to be a peak sweep. So what do we need? We really need to add to this a data element and an instrument. So let's go do that. Um, we'll go into the data tab first and we'll add a data item, which we reviewed previously. And I'm going to call this dat underscore specan. And since we're going to do a radiated emissions profile, a vertical and a horizontal, we'll kind of begin with the end in mind and we'll go specan H for horizontal. And the other boxes here are user, user boxes. You don't have to fill them in, but they're very helpful. So when you read the spectrum analyzer, it's going to give you back uh, dB microvolts, and this element literally is the raw horizontal test data. And when I say raw, I mean it hasn't had cable losses or antenna factors applied. It's literally the raw numbers out of the instrument. So we'll save that, and then we'll create an instrument. We'll come here to the instrument panel. Click add the plus sign and we're going to name this specan. And we'll go to our driver explorer. And we'll select spectrum analyzer and select Agilent. And in the list, we have an MXE. Uh, that driver works very well with the simulator. So we'll use that driver for the sim. And then you can see that that's been loaded. The driver info tab has some information about the driver and tile version. And then we get to the address tab. Now, we're not actually connected to the box, so we need to simulate the instrument. In the communication block on the address tab, we can actually select simulation, and that changes this panel. So now the sim panel has a type of instrument you're simulating, and it has already selected analyzer, which it should and it places the timeout at 10 seconds. 10,000 milliseconds is 10 seconds. And in the, in the settings tab, you can determine the number of points and the type, and this is fine. We're gonna do a basic CISPR sweep, so these settings are perfectly fine. Now, what will happen as soon as I hit okay, 
and we engage the simulator, Tile will see that there's an instrument and it's going to be getting told it's an IP instrument. So it's going to look for it while the simulator is creating it. And you'll see these panels come up. And if they come up on my other screen, I'll drag them onto this one. So the sim is starting. And yes, the panels did come up on the other screen. And what you get is you get the, sig the spectrum analyzer server. And here's a signal that the internal signal generator is creating for that spectrum analyzer. Kind of a, almost a, a broad, you know, comb generator type of wave with random noise in it. So there's, there's a signal to be discerned and we can receive. Now, once we have these panels running, we don't want to close them, but we do wish to minimize them. We don't need them in the way. So we'll, we'll minimize them off screen. We can get back to them if we need to. And so now, I'd like to show you, if we go to our project tree, you'll see that we now have a data item, we have an instrument, and we have a few actions here. And that's how this gets populated as we build the profile. More and more of these things come into play in the project tree. So in the instrument, what do we really need here? We need to um, add the data item, so it's dat spec n h, we select in the measurement data. And then in the instruments tab, we select spectrum analyzer and click OK. Now at this point, we've made a few changes, so let's be diligent and remember, I'll remind you of this several times, remember to save your progress. You do not want to make more than three or four changes and then have something happen and you lose them all and have to redo it. So save the changes. So, okay, Larry, that's great. We have this M range. Uh, let's go ahead and call this sweep H, by the way, we can rename that. We'll call it sweep H. So we have this action and we have a data item. We have an instrument. Well, what do we do? Well, in tile, when you have a one-off icon like this or action, you can right click on it and you can hit go or execute. And the difference between the two, go, will run that action and then proceed to any downstream actions after that, where execute will run just the action and stop. So when you're designing a prompt window or a menu, being able to do execute and not have the program continue on from where you are is very useful. So it's, it's, it makes it easier to use. So in this case, we're just going to hit go You'll see that while the test is running, there's a, it's highlighted in blue. Then when it's done successfully, it turns green. Okay, great, what happened? Well, if we open our data item and go to values, we can see that we've now captured all of this tabular data. And if we go to the first point was at 100 megahertz, we can actually see that there's a, a big massive peak rate at 99.8 megahertz, and then it tapers back down to more of a noisy level. And there's peaks in other places as well, the other four peaks that are being created by the VSG. So we will get into graphing and correcting that data uh, shortly, but I wanted to build out more of the profile. So we have this ability to run this test. Well, you know, how do we get to it so an operator can do it? And that is going to be uh, set up via the main menu. We're going to create some options, okay? So what we'll do is, the first thing I wanna do is show you that this green arrow, this run main action, if you click on it, it's a play button for the profile, but it doesn't work right now because no main action is selected. So if we click on, if we follow these directions, it says click on the flow chart, set the main action to the desired action in the properties view. Well, the properties view is this panel. If we click in the flow chart, this is the properties of the profile, the, the overhead properties, and the main action is undefined. So we'll go and we'll drop down and we'll select main as the main action. So now if I hit this green arrow, the main action runs and it turns green. Now it didn't go, you know, nothing happened because it's not connected to anything, but it runs. So in the palette now, we can take the connector, which if we just click on it, and then we just click on one action, drag it over to the other action and click, 
you get this connector. Now, if we run this again, we wind up with main, jumps over to the main menu, and it waits for input. Oddly enough, if I hit yes, I get a green response. If I do it again and I hit cancel or I hit the X, I get a red response because that's seen as you know a failure of some kind and the icon will light up in red, which is very useful in Tile when you have complex profiles that when you reach a stopping point that wasn't intentional, the, pro the icon will turn red to highlight where the issue is. So with the main menu now, we need to create places for it to go. So what I'd like to do, and if you'd follow along, <clears throat> is go ahead and grab some Go actions, and we'll put four more Go actions down the left side of the screen here. Okay. And the first one we'll call clear data. The second one we'll call test info. The third one we'll call run test. And the fourth one will be export data. So we have those options. And one other option that we'll add that will go in the menu is we'll go grab the save the uh, the save disk, the save icon action, and drop it in. And we're going to call this guy save as. And we can put a few dots there. And what we'll do is we'll connect it back to the main menu as well. So you've got the main menu sitting between the main and the save as. And the purpose of this is this will be the first option in the menu. So when we go to main menu, there's, we're creating this. We have a message window that'll appear when we, when we load the, you know, load the program and you get to the menu. So in here, we'll put please select the desired option. On the choice tab, we'll do multiple choices only because we're not wiring to one choice or another. We're going to have a multiple choice list. And then in the jump to, we're going to have these different places that we can send the profile from the menu. We can send the path of the test from the main menu. So in this order, let's double click these, put save as, clear data, test info, run test, export data. So they're arranged top to bottom how they are on the screen. That's personal preference. You don't have to do it that way, but I do it this way to illustrate the next point, which is this. So we get this list created. Now we'll save our progress. And now when we run, we get this menu window. And what's interesting about it is <clears throat> it has auto sorted everything we put in there in alphabetical order. This is a kind of a feature or habit of past versions of tile. Tile four, five, and six would do this. And so older profiles the programmer would have to put a 01 dash, 02 dash, 03 dash to get things to show up in the menu in the order they wanted them done. In this version of Tile, we have a choice. Rather than dealing with this menu, we can cancel out of this and go to the properties of the main menu. And in these properties for this action, for the prompt action, there's this new prompt dialog. If we change this from false to true, we get a completely different looking panel. It, it, that putting it as true involves more logic in the background. And now when we run this, the panel is a push button panel and it's arranged in the order that we put it in the action. So this is important to um, our flow. You know, you, we want to, generally speaking, you want to display things in the order that you think the operator would do them in, right? You know, you come into the profile, you haven't tested in a long time, you want to do a quick save as to save as, you know, whatever model and serial number of instrument you're testing so you don't keep overwriting your old data. You can clear any existing data, which we'll set that up in another session. Uh, we'll update the test info. Again, we'll be setting that up in another session. 
you can command it to run the test. And then we'll be able to export data. So when we're through all the sessions, all of these things will work and you'll know how to do them. So we've kind of gotten into the main menu and test tasks a little bit, um, but we really, uh, you know, we're really on our way here. Um, we wanna keep each of these sessions brief. So this will be the conclusion of session three. Thank you. Thank you.